Hell, hello everybody. Okay, we're gonna talk about the latest episode of Beyblade Burst Sparking. So there is some, there's one crazy moment in this episode that is building up to the antagonist of this season. So if you don't know, we're gonna get started. Now the one thing I gotta say, Two things. One, how I watch it, I get a VPN and I go to the Coral Coral YouTube channel. Please do not link anything that is not from the official channel. I hate when people do that. I have to keep on deleting. Uh, get a VPN. Coral Coral C O R O. Again, you'll find it. You can watch the official release there. There's obviously no subtitles. Please support the official release. And uh, second thing, obviously, the Mirage is out. Please do not spam asking or no if you're wondering when i'll do it after this weekend just don't spam saying it's out i know it is please anyways so basically the the tells episode to my memory is something like attack not good attack not good so free goes up against huga and he basically changes fafnir to the absorption mode obviously because that's what's catered to right days now i believe they do have a strategy or er, Hikaru and Rantaro talked to him at the start. It's, it's probably something along the lines of, hey, when you're going into this battle, don't just attack head on. Fafnir is a stamina type bail, just use its power again. You know, typical exposition, you know, of Fafnir. Anyways, the battle's starting. I think Free comments on something like you're very, you were very calm or something during the turn or something along those lines. You get. This is Yuga's episode, man, it's really awesome. So Free does this cool little launch, and if you're gonna notice, if you're wondering why there's no sparks, I don't know why they didn't just reuse the bank animation when he light launches, because he did this on purpose. He weak launches Fafnir, so does a little like the little tap thing. They're both going at it. Now the thing, was, well, they're both going at it eventually. So the thing is, and it's really weird because, okay, if Free's gonna light launch, I don't know, why I didn't just do this, or maybe this is explained after, but, you know, logically speaking, right, do you see this even in real life? If you're gonna light launch the Fafnir, and the bay doesn't hit it at all, you're, you're gonna win, because Fafnir's not getting hit, and it can't steal your spin, obviously, against Fafnir against right bays. And it was really weird, because he was literally doing that for most of that battle, but then he just tries to go for the attack, and there is one thing demonstrating this episode, which I'm sure a lot of people know since this is catered towards Fafnir, but... Anyways, Huga is going around and around, and Fafnir is right about to lose. Or will it? Huga attacks, and you'll notice it'll hit the rubber, but then after the chassis also connects. However... BAST FINISH! Yes! If you don't know what this is, this is a slow-mo burst. Is that the right term? Slow-mo burst. Basically, whenever a left bay is really weak and goes up against the right bay, when the right bay tries to hit it with all its force, it fails. Because of the fact that all that power just goes into it, then after click, 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 burst, finish. I was really cool to see that. I legitimately thought, it was like, no, man, are they going to do free dirty and they're going to make him lose? Burst, finish, Hyperion loses just like that. So to anyone who is really worried that Free is sort of just going to be, you know, thrown to the side, he's not going to be respected as this legendary blader. No! And they're even like, oh, legendary blader, Free de la Hoya wins! Free is just like so unimpressed by Huga, man. Both like, Free? And Rotar's like, hey, give this kid another chance! It's like, all right, there you go, free. And there's like this funny shot where you're just like patting him on the shoulder. He gets excited, they talk again. Now, in this one, free is such a Chad, man. I really sound like a free fanboy and I don't want to. <laughs> no, but how funny is it that now we have three different versions of where free light launches a, a bay? One, he just purposely smiles and he weak launches it. Two, he'll do the sparking shoot where he actually doesn't do the sparking shoot. Three, he hand spins it. We gotta hand spin the Fafnir, man. Jesus. 
I, I I thought they might not do it, but I thank God they did it with the Fafnir. I think I think I remember with Wizard since Wizard wasn't you know like Freeze Bay. They just he, Fumi I just left it there in the center of the stadium. Then after he just went at it. So funny. And yo, this reminds me back in Beyblade vs. God when it's like, wait, what are you doing? You, you can't just have your bay like that and freeze like, oh yeah, that's interesting. Oh, that's that's really interesting. Really? Really no. Wow. You sure about that? Yeah, but you know, freeze just holding the bay there. It is... It, it, it's just so entertaining to see, man. It really is. Because obviously got Hugo, he's all flustered. He's like, oh, wait, what are you... What are you doing? What are you doing? And then after, you know... We're gonna we're gonna get into the rest, right? We're gonna get into the rest. So free obviously it just says a little bit of a hand spin from before and everything. And it's just so interesting seeing free, you know, go from hard launching to light launching and doing all this stuff. Like we literally see before, beats him, and then after not even that, can't even give Huga a break. And he just goes for it. So Huga talks to Hyperion like the actual avatar. And I really do love that this has really been expanded on from like from God to Cho Z to GT to now where they actually talk to the avatars and they actually have bonding moments. I thought that was so cool. And it's just so, it's such a pure boy moment like seeing Hyuga just talk to his avatar and everything. I really like that. And they do the cool little thing where it really reminds me of Iger with Achilles. He has this launch thing, uh, flips up the launcher in the air, grabs it, grabs the bay, grabs the launcher, then after twists it around, and then after does this uh, sparking shoot, and free hand spin. You get this very funny shot. Now, look at that. He does a hit, and you think Fafnir is done. It's not, and free is just looking at it. He's like, oh, get all you got. I'm just going to win with a survivor finish. Are you serious? And he's like, ah! It keeps on hitting it. Oh, this is the part where he's like, no, come on, are you serious? You're not going to win like that. So, pushes Hyperion back. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So, at this moment here, which we've seen this in the opening, I, I don't know if Hikaru has done that weird, like, flaming up hair thing. But basically, Tuga goes Super Saiyan God. <laughs> and Hyperion powers up. And if you notice something, who is this? Huh? This was the this is the moment where I freaked out. That is Lane Valhalla. Now, if you don't know, if you want context, how the reason why Free wanted to make Mirage Fafnir was because after the encounter with Fi, obviously got his bay repaired. First of all, his bay getting repaired is not far-fetched at all. We've literally seen Shu like an episode or two after get his uh, Chosy Spriggan repaired. We've seen Laban get his Vice Leopard repaired. Free, guys, Fafnir was repaired. Went up against a rookie, which I believe, what is it? Was it in New York or something like that, I believe? Lost to him, and because of that, Free wants to make a new Fafnir to get stronger so he can beat him. Now, because of that, that's what's so interesting. So it seems like when Hyuga and Hikaru are at their peak with their resonance, Free will get to these visions of Lane Valhall and his menacing aura. So. This is Lane Valhalla. This is the antagonist. This is the antagonist. Obviously, I would assume that he's not going to look literally just like that. Obviously, if you look at the manga uh, poster for how he looks, I'm assuming he'll look a little bit different uh, when he actually does appear in the anime. But if you're going to remember something, this reminds me of how Delta was sort of seen in the show. Well, so Delta was a little bit different, but you know what I mean? Like how Diabolus was like slowly, slowly kind of like put into those episodes and deltas like it was you get the idea anyways yo free gets angry like it's like free, now i don't know why he got this angry there's no context this is made up this is my own guess what if lane valhalla broke guys fafnir and free is so angry that he lost again so badly that when he ever, whenever he sees Lane's, you know, menacing aura, he just snaps, and he literally does. He powers up, he's very angry, Fafnir goes, literally the music just cuts there. And he's like, no, you're going down, and Volt's like, free! Because free is not like, 
his usual calm self and everything. I think Free is like, you know how like when Free saw Iga's like menacing power and he's like, this guy's got to be stopped. And when he went up against, I think like Free's had enough of this and Free just, he snaps, man. And he's going crazy, does Mirage Claw and easily disposes of Hyperion. Now, I can't say this. Next episode is going to be awesome. It is a tag team battle between Huga and Free versus Volt and Hikaru. Blues versus red and yellow I guess that's awesome man that's a tag team battle I gotta do overall episode was solid no complaints for me the fact that Lane Valhalla seems to be like this really menacing character or regardless you know of course if we went up against I cannot wait because obviously that means that we're probably gonna get some flashback eventually with free versus lane or free will definitely do a rematch with lane or the Rookie Blader, which I'll leave for right now, in case for whatever the reason may be that I'm not right on that. That is it for now. This episode was solid. One gave Hyuga, like, a good connection with his avatar, built on his power. Free is not like someone who just lose right away, which I think is good. And it's awesome, man. This series is good. The, the, the complaint of, oh, nothing's really happening. I don't think people understand that this is just, like, the whole thing is just the tournament with all these sparking bladers, right? They gotta, they gotta kind of build up in these episodes that Hyuga and, and Karu are training all these time with these bladers before that actually happens. You know, or the, the spark, whatever it is, this festival, right? Because imagine if the series just starts, oh, oh yeah, okay, oh, Hyuga and Karu are just gonna go and beat everyone right away. No, they're building slowly with training, and that's, it's gotta make sense. It's like if Aiga and Chozi just literally beat Everybody at the start, like he beat Volt in the first battle, he beat Louie in the first battle, like literally like that. I don't know, that's it for now. Thank you all for watching. I'm hyped for us. Fafnir, man, let's go! All right, bye.